Hey everyone, I'm Thomas. And I'm Gennady. We founded Moon Studios during the rise of independent games in 2010. Back then, there weren't all that many modern Metroidvania games out there, and so we created Ori and the Blind Forest. Ori became a huge success with gamers and critics alike, and it helped spark new interest in the genre. Our next project was supposed to be something totally different, because for over 20 years we've been playing action RPGs religiously, and we always dreamt of where this genre could be taken next. At the same time, we felt that we could do even more within the Metroidvania genre, and so we embarked on making Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We ultimately shipped another game that was incredibly well received and that we're deeply, deeply proud of. But we had never forgotten about our dream of creating our own action RPG. We have left our mark on one genre before. Now we hope to do the same for action RPGs. Our story begins 841 years after the embrace. King Harold is dead, and he's to be succeeded by his young and untested son, Magnus. Meanwhile, rumors of the return of a great plague, known as the Pestilence, are starting to emerge. Madrigal Selene, a ruthless figure in the church, sees the Pestilence as a chance to prove herself. These forces converge on the backwater of Isola Sacra, where rebel groups and the provincial government fight for control amid the Isle's crumbling ruins. As a Sarim, a member of an ancient sect devoted to defeating the Pestilence, you are sent on a merchant ship to investigate. En route, your ship comes under attack from a rebel group known as the Risen. The battle leaves the vessel battered and badly damaged. The ship stands little chance as it limps towards the shore and it is torn apart on the rocks at sea. You find yourself washed up at the shores of Isola Sacra, bruised and unarmed, and end up caught in the midst of both a vast political struggle and a fight for survival. With no rest for the wicked, we decided to handcraft an entirely seamless world. Nothing in this game is procedurally generated. Instead of moving across a randomly generated flat plane, throughout this showcase you will notice that our world is dense, interactive, uses a ton of verticality, and that every inch was crafted by a designer. You'll be well served, always paying attention to your surroundings too. There are secret areas just about everywhere that usually reward you with precious items. Loot in No Rest for the Wicked is randomized. It ensures that every player has their own unique experience and that every time you explore an area, you might just finally get that last gold ore or new bad legs you've been waiting for. We abandoned the old point-and-click model to move your character around. We wanted players to have ultimate control over their character. Every movement you make should feel tactile and be intentional. For that reason, we designed Wicked to be played using WASD or a controller. I knew it. <coughs> should have never brought you on board. You'll never make it to Sacrament over here. Instead of going for realism, our goal is always to create games that look like a painting come to life. Our artists spent years meticulously modeling and hand painting all of Isola Sacra. You will traverse through plenty of breathtakingly beautiful environments, lit with natural day and night cycles, immersed in dynamic weather. We also engineered a very special way of rendering our top-down world where you can always see so much further into the distance. Our goal was to make everything as interactive as possible. If an object looks like you can climb it, then you can actually climb it. 
and if an object is too thin to walk over it, you might just need to balance your way across. Right from the start, we decided to create an animation-driven combat system. Which to us meant that every attack you make should be carefully considered. We wanted to bring weighty, precision-driven combat to the top-down space. Combat that's inspired by several different genres from ARPGs to fighting games. In order to overcome an opponent, you need to watch out for telegraph behaviors and then punish accordingly. Timing, spacing and weapon weight are incredibly important in Wicked's combat model. In the rest for the Wicked, every single weapon has its own unique moveset and stats driven by RNG. Using this dagger, I'll have a hard time breaking this enemy's shield. Let's try something different. If you time it just right, you can parry incoming attacks, allowing you to exploit an enemy's opening. Gear in the West for the Wicked comes in four different rarities. White items are common. Unlike in other ERPGs, they're not trash loot. We instead made those the most customizable. Blue items are rare. They offer only positive enchantments. Purple items are cursed. They offer very positive enchantments, but they also come with a cursed enchantment. Gold items are unique. They are specifically handcrafted by our designers and offer unique enchantments. This rare claymore we found has an enchantment that increases my focus skin whenever I deal damage. Every weapon has a chance to drop with its own unique rune then be extracted and used on other weapons. That way, players can come up with their own unique moveset. You gain focus through combat. It is then used to perform rune attacks. Let's try one. But every now and then, you might not even need to use your weapons to get rid of an enemy. Sometimes, all you need is a little push. Every weapon you'll find in No Rest for the Wicked has its own bespoke moveset, custom made by our incredible animation department. Squash and stretch and other animation principles directly inform our combat design. Layered on top of that, enchantments that drastically impact weapon behavior and our deep rune system. All of this culminates in a weapon system that we feel is extremely fun and engaging and allows every player to create their own style of combat. When it comes to gear like armor, there is a wide range of options, each with their own design and attributes. The weight of such items even affects your movement in combat. For instance, if you opt in for a lighter, faster build, you can quick step out of enemy's way. Quick steps are fast and don't consume a lot of stamina. With medium weight build, your character will dodge roll. Those are slower and consume more stamina.
For No Rest for the Wicked, we designed a soft class system. Instead of locking you into a character class that you then have to adhere to for the entire playthrough, we want you to have the flexibility and freedom to play as the type of character you want to and even come up with character classes we haven't even thought of. So far, we've shown what combat looks like with a more melee focused build. Let's take a look at how combat changes for a mage. This character build uses a two-handed stab. We have three rune specials available, Blink, Fireball, and Nova. Fighting multiple enemies is always tricky. When used right, Nova can be an absolute blast. The uniqueness of each item you find to craft, being able to create any character build you can think of through our soft class system and the randomized loot, all of these systems combine to ensure each playthrough and every player's experience is never truly the same. Saw Sakura is riddled with plagued enemies known as the Torn. As you can see, this Torn has been left to mutate and fester and will prove particularly vicious. Our best course of action is to study his moves and attack whenever we see an opening. Bosses are also quite brutal in No Rest for the Wicked. They will punish every mistake you will make. But keep a cool head, make use of all of the skills you've learned, and you just might succeed. As you can see, No Rest for the Wicked is an intensely skill-based game. Your gear greatly influences your power in battle, but whether you die or overcome the challenge is ultimately down to your skill. Along your journey, you will come across the town of Sacrament, the capital of Isola Sacra. Sacrament is a war-torn place, but over the course of your journey, you can help rebuild Sacrament to its former glory. Oh, ignore their gates, Saren. They likely never seen one of your kind. In order to demonstrate that, we'll switch to a realm that's already a little more advanced. Our goal is to make Sacrament as interesting and interactive as possible. Now Meet about in Mary Weather. Taylor's, Taylor's at, at your service. service. Mary, we agreed. My name goes first. Don't pretend you don't smell it. Come have a taste. And players will be in control over how Sacrament will evolve over time. For example, after my previous expedition, I helped Fillmore rebuild his smithy. He now sells better gear and is also able to upgrade our gear to a higher level. To that effect, we aim to make investing resources into Sacrament as satisfying and rewarding as investing resources into your character is. Let's take a look at another way you can make Sacrament your own. In Sacrament, you'll be able to purchase real estate. Well, if you have the funds to afford it. The city's gone to shit. Property in Sacrament can get a little bit expensive, but accumulate the riches and you can choose from a wide range of properties to suit anyone's taste. Your house is the perfect place to stash your loot, craft items, relax, and plan everything out for your next big run through the dangerous areas surrounding Sacrament. I just moved in here, so it's a little bit barren. Let's fix that. 
Out on your journey, you'll be able to collect or harvest valuable resources, which then can be used to craft new gear, furniture for your home, or even make improvements to the town itself. Catch a fish, for example, and it can be cooked and eaten, of course. But certain fish scales might even make for some fine arm. While I was on the shores of Sakura, I collected some pine wood. So now let's make use of that and make this place a little bit more cozy. Housing is incredibly cool in No Rest for the Wicked. Since you're not constrained to a grid, you can come up with some really organic looking designs. The table looks nice, but it's missing something. Ah, it's much better. While some items you can place in your house are just cosmetic, our goal is for most of them to be functional and have a gameplay purpose. With a range of properties to purchase and an incredibly flexible interior design system, we hope players will be able to find and design a unique place for them to call home. One last thing we'd like to show you today is a system we call Alive. Although No Rest for the Wicked features a traditional campaign, it was important to us that the Solar Sector is very much a living, breathing world. In order to show you what that means, we're going to go to an area called Mariner's Keep. This is an area I've previously ventured through and explored. However, since my last journey through here, Nif have overrun the local area. Presenting entirely new threats for me to tackle and resources for me to scavenge. The world of No West for the Wicked is constantly changing around you. And each time you visit a region, you'll be faced with a drastically different experience. No rest for the wicked. You never really know what to expect. For those of you who asked about Endgame, yes, we've got you covered. While we don't want to give away too much at this point, once you reach the Endgame, you can enter the Serum Crucible. This is where you'll have to test your map against some of the toughest enemies within No Rest for the Wicked. Our goal is and always has been to create a very different action RPG, one that will hopefully move the genre forward. We believe that Moon Studios is in an incredibly unique position to deliver on this vision. We have some of the best talent in the world united behind this, and we're not afraid to take the risks that need to be taken in order to change up the status quo. We've poured an incredible amount of blood, sweat, and tears into this project, and now we're at a point where we need your help to shape and build Wicked into the best game it can possibly be. Therefore, we'd like to invite all of you who love this genre, who grew up with it the same way we did, and who are excited to see a new take on it, to join us on this journey. And so we're happy to announce that we're going to be launching No Rest for the Wicked after all of these years into Steam Early Access next month on April 18th. Over the course of Early Access, we'll be tweaking, patching, and balancing the game with your input. And you will also see major content updates throughout development until we hit our 1.0 release, at which point we're planning to release on consoles as well. Wicked has been built from the ground up with multiplayer in mind. So the first of these major updates that we will be releasing in Early Access will be providing you with an innovative multiplayer experience, allowing you to play Wicked alongside or even against 
your friends. Our second major content update will bring all new regions to Sakura, new enemies, narrative updates, and so much more. With story, system, and gameplay content updates to follow thereafter. Your support and feedback during this very critical part of Early Access really does make a difference. No Rest for the Wicked begins a new era for Moon Studios, and we are committed to this project for the long run. We are incredibly excited about what will be in No Rest for the Wicked already in day one of Early Access, and we can't wait to show you all the stuff that will follow in the months to come. Once the showcase is over, be sure to tune in to your favorite media and content creators for the hands-on impressions of No Rest for the Wicked immediately following this showcase. We can't wait to see you all on April 18th.